Welcome to this uh, sunflower painting synopsis. This is a alla prima painting where the beginning, intermediate and final stages of this painting is all completed within one painting day. Now, what is uh, typically the case of a alla prima painting is that we must first find the colors and the values that we will be using in search for the drawing uh, as well as the shapes uh, that uh, we will be exploring in this composition. So in preparation for this painting session, I am therefore mixing up some colors that can represent the various zones of this painting. So we have some colors that uh, work for the background and of course a much vaster range of uh, colors and values that will help uh, translate some of the colors and values within the sunflowers. Because the sunflowers are very chromatic, uh, I'm also using a minimum amount of white in them. Because the moment white is mixed, even with yellow in the situation, it is going to reduce the chromatic intensity of a given color. And the objective now is to preserve a lot of this color intensity. Uh, so therefore, uh, as much as possible, we can work with a yellow scale of values and uh, work with uh, different uh, expressions of the yellow values, essentially, uh, mostly working with the variation of umber and ochre and cadmium, which are all within the yellow family, but represent uh, different uh, values. Now that I have created a rough scaffolding of the composition and I have whereabouts uh, knowledge of where the sunflowers will be positioned within the framework of this composition, I'm heading straight into the element of mass. Massing in the background using the color and value destination in this area, which is a combination of black and blue. And I'm applying the paint through a method of scumbling, which means that I am uh, using a hog hair bristle brush and I'm just rubbing the paint kind of rather rigorously on the canvas, spreading the paint kind of evenly. Um, and uh, in this stage, we can also see a, uh, a bit of the ground kind of shining through. So uh, the true value of the pigment is not quite vocalized yet. That will occur when we go over again and we create a, a slightly denser, more opaque passage uh, of, uh, of the color and the value of the background. Um, but for now, I just want to scumble in uh, the whereabouts color and the value in these larger areas uh, just to get a, a good impression of the direction uh, of the colors and the values as well as uh, having a fairly immediate translation of the composition. Before going into the sunflowers in the situation, I decided to also position the foreground of the table and indicate some elements of the leaf that is on the table. I also decided to focus on the vase. This is just a potential uh, way of entering into this uh, painting process. It would have been a fine decision to also, or instead, go into the sunflowers themselves, but uh, I just wanted to uh, solidify the position of the vase, making sure that it is in a very symmetric position within the composition. So I want the, for the vase to kind of be decided upon before going into the floral exploration. In addition, since the vase is uh, uh, more than not um, uh, translated through a range of fairly dark values, I also felt that uh, addressing the vase was kind of as relevant as addressing the background in terms of uh, positioning a translation of the big impression. Uh, so kind of quieting that uh, area down by removing the white of the ground and replacing it uh, kind of with the design and the impression of the vase. Now that uh, these areas are clicking into place, I'm now uh, adding a bit more paint and adding this uh, opaque layer as well. And I'm using a soft sable hair brush uh, for a bit of this paint application. There is quite a distinction between the personality traits of the hog hair bristle brushes in contrast to softer sable hair brushes. Uh, certainly they have overlapping function, but one of their kind of key traits is that a hog hair bristle brush will tend to scrape into the wet paint a little bit more, revealing a bit more kind of vivid texture sometimes, which can certainly be nice. Uh, in contrast to that, a sable hair brush because of its softer fiber, it's going to create kind of a more condensed and even uh, paint uh, layer. Uh, and through that, we can often see 
the sort of optical translation of uh, the color and value in a bit more of a saturated uh, position. So the color that you now see in the background, for example, certainly resonates with the color and the value that is mixed on the palette. So it brings it quite noticeably darker uh, in comparison to the scumbled area, but it is indeed the same mixture. As for the uh, foliage and the leaves and uh, the sort of green uh, bud area of uh, these uh, sunflowers, I'm also adding a bit more opacity. And at this point, I'm modeling the form. And modeling the form kind of means that we have the opportunity to create a very specific shape design as we are translating the various values across uh, a form. And uh, for these leaves, we have, and the stems as well, we have a a gradient of slightly lighter green in contrast to darker green and even if these are all fairly uh, compressed uh, values uh, really um, they are not uh, as uh, vibrant as the highlight for example key to the background which is the up outmost contrast so the leaves are you know in the reduced uh, value spectrum as uh, compared to for example the highlight and the, and the darkest dark uh, but still there is a uh, uh, shapes and form to be translated in such an area and so as we are translating uh, such forms we have to be particularly mindful of the specific shapes that we are observing and really how to express that delusion of form and uh, part of that I think is with very specific uh, paint applications so less scumbling a little bit more kind of deliberate uh, application of paint and uh, now I go back to the area of the vase just to solidify this form where I wanted to also express and define the area of the highlight as well as some of the more careful linear elements that sort of tie this whole sort of atmospheric area together. Uh, as we are painting in a such a form uh, as a round uh, va vase with uh, light kind of traveling through and then we have some contrast of highlights uh, mostly we see here very dark values, maybe with some subtle variation of half tones around the periphery or around the contour of the vase. And then of course we see the darker values offset by the contrast to these highlights and lighter forms. These areas are also zones that I am particularly mindful to add a solid block of pure white paint so that there is going to be a beautiful contrast uh, between the highlight and the darkest notes kind of within and surrounding the vase. In the area of the highlight, I also decided to use a palette knife to actually add the highlight. Occasionally, I will use a barbecue skewer if the highlight is quite petite, but these highlights were sort of large enough to, uh, to kind of benefit from a little bit more of a solid application. Uh, meanwhile, I am using the barbecue skewer occasionally just to draw into the wet paint to extract some very sharp and precise uh, lines uh, that uh, solidify the contour of the vase as well as the position of the water within the vase. Now that uh, these uh, zones are uh, coming along, I'm also just uh, revisiting the leaf that is uh, positioned uh, on the table. And this is just a little accent uh, in the composition. The purpose of uh, adding this uh, as an element in this composition is just to activate in other ways uh, sort of empty area of the composition. And uh, by kind of pulling this uh, organic element uh, uh, to uh, the table area, it also creates a sort of diagonal uh, between it and uh, the uh, sunflowers. So in a way, the organic elements kind of carry through the full composition. Now that the background and the vase and some of the uh, leaves are situated, uh, I am here massing in the sunflowers. And before going into any further sort of detail and investigation of uh, precise forms, I'm just looking at the major blocks of uh, dark and light um, using the color destination of those uh, different uh, values uh, of the sunflowers. And this is just to get a very quick read of the relative position uh, of these individual flowers and the relationships that they have also between themselves. Uh, now that uh, this quick read is uh, positioned, uh, it helps to in a way 
ensure that everything is where we want it to be before we start an investing time into extracting the detail of the various zones. But at this point I feel quite uh, secure in the relative position of the sunflowers so I start to zoom into kind of a flower at the time to see how far I can kind of push it along. So starting with uh, a flower that is uh, on our left side of the composition I uh, decided just to, to target this one. Uh, it kind of works a little bit independently from the other two and uh, as I'm looking at some of the uh, values in relationship to the surrounding blue value, I can also kind of quickly determine what some of these uh, darker values are. They're kind of mid-tone values. If we compare them to the value of the petals in the focal point uh, sunflower, so the flower that is in the middle, that's the closest to us, contain a larger gradient of uh, values. And uh, this, I think, is also a nice aspect to this composition uh, because uh, this flower is kind of active with that sort of two-dimensional element through its sort of emerging and appearing kind of from a darker value atmosphere. The petals also have a very active contour design. Uh, so it's not like one smooth form, it's really just almost like a jagged uh, form a bit as we are exploring the rhythmic design surrounding the individual flowers. As we are working with the sunflowers, we must consider the interior of the mass and the values uh, of the uniform kind of uh, yellow area. And we have to consider how this uh, element of, of these petals also express themselves uh, where the petals uh, meet the background. Therefore, I find it helpful to work a bit simultaneously uh, with this form. So first kind of thinking about the more mass oriented element that exists within the interior of the flowers and then allowing these sort of shape exploration to uh, sort of echo out into the contour where I'm also using very specific sort of linear observation techniques to make sure that the contour of the sunflowers are kind of reading with accuracy and with a dynamic sense of harmony. We want to make sure that as we are working with something like the sunflowers that the petals do not become too repetitive as a consequence of not understanding the design. So we need to search for very specific and dynamic shapes and a part of how we can do that is by looking at the negative shapes that surround the sunflowers uh, so that we can kind of vacillate between both thinking about the petals but also thinking about the background. Um, and in just looking at the contour of the petals we can kind of look at that specific design but from the viewpoint of the background or from the view viewpoint of the petals. Uh, and both uh, sort of viewpoints uh, assist in finding a good design of these petals. I'm also searching for where there is a kind of chunk uh, of a shape. So for example, on the sunflower to our left, there's a bit of a blue wedge shape uh, that is a bit larger than some of the other wedge shapes. Uh, and that also adds a bit of a, you know, intriguing and uh, a very sort of specific type of shape that uh, sort of belongs to this particular flower that is a characteristic of this sort of individual, so to speak. As I'm uh, moving through the different stages uh, of the painting process, I'm now also going through the different uh, sunflowers, kind of letting one lead the way, but um, also allowing the other ones to catch up in the painting journey. Part of this process is because it's an Alla Prima painting session and this is also very much my objective for this painting day. So therefore uh, I allow the, the strategy to be reflected uh, in the goal, so to speak. Now in the situation where we are working with uh, living flowers that move a lot over several consecutive days, a very helpful painting strategy is to paint one flower at a time. Perhaps mass in the full bouquet like we did here by just looking kind of rather coarsely at the darker and lighter values but without any detail. And then sort out uh, the information that exists in one flower at a time. This is very helpful uh, especially when working with uh, flowers that move a lot such as roses and tulips for example so that we can resolve 
uh, a flower at the time so that by the time that it changes we are sort of already completed the task in that area so again remember if you are working from living flowers that tend to be moving a lot and you are building the painting in several consecutive days uh, work with one flower at the time so that you go through the stages of the blocking the intermediate stage and the refining stage all in one go uh, through that kind of uh, concluding a flower at the time and as for uh, sunflowers, uh, they tend to be somewhat stable, I find, during um, some an, an amount of hours. So even in one painting session, I didn't see that these moved a lot. But uh, from one day to the next, they can start to wilter and start to hang with the head a little bit. So at that point, there's significant amount of movement uh, for this particular painting strategy to be helpful as well. Now, moving along, I am now extracting more information and more detail uh, from the petals, uh, kind of working from the large abstract uh, mass, essentially, into to chipping away and finding more and more intricate information. And through that journey, I'm also constantly looking at where there's an uh, a interesting line or accent or a unique shape design that I want to hold on to, but also that I want to build upon and also use as a reference for the other leaves. So uh, rather than working from like one side to the next and kind of cutting out the leaves that way, that is going to be, uh, I think, give too much of a repetitive result. Uh, make sure that you are looking at some anchor points, essentially, at different locations of the flowers, maybe in areas that exist uh, sort of surrounding the flowers. So you can have a couple of accents on one side and then on the opposite side, a diagonal, etc. And through establishing various anchor points of gesture and proportion, this can also serve as valid uh, reference point as we are breaking down the larger mass configurations into smaller segments and into smaller shapes. And uh, by having an anchor point that is working well with other anchor points, we kind of give ourselves a window or a, a shape area uh, that we can then uh, use these anchor points to relate to. So that's a really helpful way of, uh, of building, I think, a strategy as we are working with uh, the petals um, and also working with really any information that is very rich with detail. This is maybe also one of the challenging aspects of working with uh, sunflowers. They are so dynamic, they contain so many petals, they are so rich with information, yet there is also uh, values that connect maybe several petals together. Um, and so for the front sunflower in this composition, this uh, element is very much in the forefront of my mind, that I have a balance between areas that are a little bit more in atmosphere, that go into the shadow, or that exist a little bit into a half-tone, atmospheric half-tone, dark, dark half-tone area, in contrast with where the leaves are emerging from the composition, capturing light, but where we'll also find some accents of uh, lines that help to create a, a solid design, so that it is not just a mass of a value, but very much a combination of a linear design together with the element of mass. This is perhaps one of the elements that make flowers in general General, complex to work with as a, as a genre, but also extremely enriching and, uh, and very beautiful. So uh, yeah, remember to balance the element of line and design um, and sort of contour together with the element of uh, value and mass and sort of larger shapes as you are working with sunflowers. In the flower to the far right of the composition, I quite enjoyed keeping the petals a bit more scumbled in and uh, focusing more on the design of the bud that almost work as this kind of beautiful crown, I think, holding these uh, petals together. Uh, it also reminded me a bit of the shape of an artichoke, the way that the, um, the sort of structure of this bud is uh, uh, shaped uh, in that way, very kind of mathematical uh, and beautiful design. So this concludes the painting synopsis of these sunflowers. I hope that you enjoyed this painting process and thank you so much for tuning in.